that uh, you're on here and um, people will be tuning in and those who will tune in, um, maybe after the interview, go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know who you are. Well, I'm Damon Cannon. I am the proud owner of the Midwest Sound, amen, the member of the WABA. This is our second season uh, coming up with the WABA, and we're excited. Uh, we have one of the best teams in the WABA. You better and, uh, I mean, we got to just go ahead and put that out there up front. Uh, we, we let some people off the hook last year. And uh, we coming for them. It's not a it's not a mystery. It's not a secret. Uh, we coming from some people in Georgia and D.C. area. We got their names uh -oh. circled on the schedule. Uh, but we're excited about we're excited about the WABA. Oh yeah, we all are. We all are. So, um, do you have? I know you're an owner, but leading on up to this, do you have an athletic background yourself? If so, can you uh, tell us a little bit about it? Well, the older I get, the better I was, you know. So uh, <laughs> my my athletic background, growing up, I was all, I was an all-sports guy. I did all, I was a three-sports guy in high school, uh, went to college, uh, out of high school, went to University of Tulsa, then transferred from there to Southeast Missouri State playing football oh. at both schools. And, uh, and, uh, We can't semi -pro. Went to play semi-pro football after that for a few years with the St. Louis Bulldogs. Okay. Uh, after that, I uh, started and managed my own semi-pro team, which was the St. Louis Spirits football team. Okay. Uh, we did that for 10 years uh, before starting in the basketball arena where we started the St. Louis Spirits basketball team. And now we have three teams, the uh, St. Louis Spirits basketball, the, Mid uh, the Missouri Capitals in Columbia, Missouri, and, of course, the Midwest Sound in the WABA. Oh, okay, okay. Busy, busy, busy. You better expand. Doing big things. You better expand. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm Doing big about. things. So, um, yeah. I mean, I understand, you know, uh, you had your hand in football and um, – so did you start off with, with men's basketball first and then gradually went into the women's? You... Yes. I, actually, I got to meet our great CEO, Marsha, uh, while working in the W, I mean, in the ABA okay. uh, with the men's team and uh, yeah. heard the vision yeah. of what was going on with the WABA and was so excited to have an opportunity to be a part of it. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay. how I it. That's how I got in the game. So how so how is it now? Uh, like now that you'd ventured off into women's basketball, is it is it a little different, or you know, it's all the same? Well, just a little bit, just a little bit. I, I I've been calling and getting counseling, you know, uh, because I have a handicap. I'm a man, and so uh, <laughs> <laughs> having having that small handicap is a challenge for me. And uh, believe it or not, it's different coaching girls and uh, managing girls. Our ladies are fantastic. I was blessed to have a, so, a super talented team. Mm -hmm. uh, they came to the table with a lot of ability, and uh, they had a lot of success last year, which I'm greatly proud of them and uh, excited about them coming back to, uh, part to participate in our next season. Uh, but it was different, you know, because the guys, I can talk to them different. You know, I, I, I call them names and I punch them in the chest and knock them down and stuff like that. And, and, and then we get up and we're friends, you know. <laughs> so I had to learn, like, maybe um, I shouldn't do that when I go to the <laughs> girls' practice. Well, <laughs> maybe, no. maybe I should handle things a little bit different. Been uh, but I was. <laughs> I, I absolutely, especially if you met my girls, you'll know, you know, <laughs> they're, they're a little different. And uh, I had an amazing team, amazing teammate, and our coach last year was Arletha Lewis. Uh, we actually met in college, and uh, she was a standout at uh, Southeast Missouri State. She was on a team that made it to the Final Four in the NCAA when we were there. And uh, so I knew she had the, the skill level and the temperament to handle our ladies. 
and uh, she was assisted by Johnny McKinney, uh, who worked with her last year, and they just did an amazing job. They made me look smart. Uh, I was just able to work the scoreboard and, you know, make sure the bills were paid, and, and they just came out and kept competing and doing a great job week to week. And so this year, uh, Arletha has uh, retired, and uh, Coach McKinney is actually taking the helm in the coming year to uh, work with the girls. So this is giving him a little time to get acclimated to being the head coach and the head man, and and he's learning how to work with the ladies. And so it's it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I bet. So what's the what's the inspiration behind the name? Why why the Midwest Sound? Why, why the well, I'm. Good. I'm glad you asked that. Can't you hear it? Can't you hear it? Uh, <laughs> you know, Creative. one of the things that <laughs> one of the things that we were uh, working on uh, as we were kind of branding the Midwest Sound is the entertainment part of basketball. Okay. And in, in our home events, one of the things that we do is we partner with. Uh, the local entertainment uh, people, the radio stations, Ooh. and so forth. And uh, our theme was to have kind of the entertainment of music and, and dance and all of that all in the middle of the basketball event. So we oh, wanted gotcha. to make it kind of a, a, a circus of sorts, that there was so much going on that it gave great entertainment value to our families. And uh, And this coming year, if all goes well, we're uh, working on with our streaming projects uh, and, and some of our entertainment uh, venues to actually have live entertainment uh, streamed in during our games uh, and so forth like that. So we're, it's all about that Midwest sound. Okay. Uh, you know, we've got, the, we've got the music, we've got the game, we've got everything that's going on for your entertainment value. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. How creative. Yeah. Hey, that, hey, that hey I'm out. learning. I'm learning. <laughs> that, that stands out. Uh, yeah. Mr. Cannon, good job with that. I mean, that's, Thank that's you. all That's all basically like a marketing tool, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. My tuition dollars work. They come to the games and be born. So That's right. That's okay. right. Hey, what way to entertain your crowd? You can't go no, you can't get no better than entertainment. And then, and then we have great entertainment in, in St. Louis. I'll tell you, I found okay. out that I was old. You know, I, I, I'm learning that I'm old because uh, we had this guy you may have heard of named Nelly. Uh, you, you heard of him? Uh, he, <laughs> that is my clue. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Nelly grew up here on the block in the neighborhood around us. And uh, actually, my little cousin used to play ball with him and some of the lunatics growing up. And, uh, you know, so my daughter is now in the fifth grade and they were doing this class. And she said in the class, they were doing music class. And it was like, name this famous music artist in St from St. Louis. And they were like, uh, we don't know. you know. <laughs> and, and I think they somebody mentioned Nellie and it was like, who's that? You know, we don't know oh, yeah, who that generation is. don't know. They don't know. Yeah, they don't know anything about them. So I was like, okay, I guess we're old now. Uh, you right. know, that people don't know who Nelly is. Oh. But uh, we're going to get him in on the Midwest Sound. Oh, yeah. Mr. Dirty when he, when he used to wear that Band-Aid up under his eyes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Damon, how did you feel when it was mutually agreed upon uh, to cancel the season this year? How, how did it make you feel? Well, I, I was t terribly upset. And, and I was terribly upset because I had been waiting for 12 months to play the Coastal Empire um, down in Georgia, who ended our season last year. Uh-oh, Coach and, Jesse, um, Coach Jesse. Uh -oh. I, I mean, he knows it. He knows it. I mean, and uh, I don't know what kind of spell he had on us or, you know, what he did. It, it, it was probably the trees, something down there in the trees. But um, I had been waiting all year and looking forward to uh, getting back and exacting a little revenge on him and, uh, and getting a chance to see some of the other of the WABA elites. So I was really disappointed when, uh, you know, we heard that we were going to have to cancel the season 
Uh, and But I think that Marsha did a great job in making sure that uh, we were all on the same page, that we're all moving in the same direction as a league. And uh, things are not as bad in St. Louis right now as it is in some of the other places around the country. Uh, but we were just terrified with the things that other people were having to deal with and uh, felt so bad for their families and some of the struggles that they're having in everyday life that's outside of basketball. So, uh, you know, we just have to be patient and we kept working and uh, we're doing some other things in preparation. So I think it's going to make us that much better next season. Exactly. You know, it just gave you more time to, to cook some things up, put some more ingredients in the pot and, and, you know, like Marsha had mentioned, you know, safety first. So, you know, this, Absolutely. this was a worldwide pandemic. So we just, you know, could nobody go at risk, especially Absolutely. You know, people coming to these games. So, yeah, it, like yeah. It's, like you said, it's just patience and it just gives you enough time to, to come up with more creative things. So that's right. That's just, right. Oh, oh just that's know right. 2021 is it's about to take off like a rocket. Like I'm, 2021 I'm, is going to be like that. I look so I forward mean, to August. I, I really do. Um, so. And we've all we've all kind of been in a pressure cooker. You know, it's like we've just been building up. And then we think that we're there, but we're not there. So we're building up. So can you imagine the things that we're going to come out of the gate with and the appetite that people are going to have for our great game? And they haven't seen, if you haven't seen a WABA game, you haven't seen good ladies basketball yet. Man, I mean, it's the, it's the most it entertaining brand of basketball that you're going to see. The level of intensity, uh, the speed of the game, the energy, these ladies are competing every possession and so it's, it's going to be crazy because honestly that's that's how i was when i when i saw the uh south region championship between the monarchs and the angels Woo. Uh -huh. i think if i'm not mistaken i think they went in the three overtimes and i was just biting they did. Yeah. i was like man they playing they are and nobody playing. was giving up yeah. yes Ooh, yes, bad. nobody was giving up an inch either. And I mean, and then to come back the next week, I know you wanted to say they had to come back the next week and see the Midwest sound. That's what you was thinking after you, you know, you know, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, but, and I pretty sure that was a good game too. So, you know, it really was. I mean, it was exciting. I couldn't take anything away from the game except the score. You know, everything else was exciting. And, uh, you know, we got to meet uh, other great people. And I'll tell you something that's really great. I'm giving Jesse a hard time because that's my brother and everything. But, you know, when you meet the people in the WABA, mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things that you're going to appreciate more than anything else. And I'm so glad you're giving us this opportunity to in introduce ourselves to the nation. Well, but the owners and coaches that we have, are so great, and those players that get out there, they're so fun, and to hear some of their stories exactly. and where they've come from and what they've been through, and uh, and they've got more to go. You know, they've got more to go. They, they're not done yet. They've got more to accomplish, and so it's a great time to be a part of this league. Oh, yeah, the league of opportunity at that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. how, how, are you, how are you occupying this time? Well, I, I found out how, how to sleep. Uh, that's something I'm learning, uh, you know. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm blessed that, you know, we still have our men's work to do. And so the, the men are kind of gearing up. And so they're making me come out and do work. Uh, but, but one of the biggest things that we've been working on is awareness. Uh, we want people to know. We want people to know who we are. Uh, we've had an opportunity to support some of our local organizations and charities. Uh, this is October, so it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Yep. And uh, we've got a great partner in JADASA. JADASA stands for Journey Against Domestic and Sexual Abuse. And uh, they're an amazing organization that provides support and resources to men and women that have been victims of childhood sex abuse or 
domestic violence or date rape situations mm -hmm. and, and such. And so they actually had their walk last Saturday. We did a virtual walk with them okay. uh, as well as other things that they're doing for awareness. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's excellent opportunity for us to be able to be there and, uh, and actually work with some of these organizations and say, hey, we care. We care about what's going on. Uh, people's, health, uh, people's health centers are here in the area and they're a very big uh, community health organization. Uh, that provides resources to a lot of families that don't have insurance or, mm -hmm. or so forth. Uh, it's kind of the old clinic, quote unquote, that you go to. I'm going to the clinic. Yeah. Uh, and so the People's Health does an amazing job in our community, and we're glad to have them. And so we're working on supporting some of their initiatives um, on uh, health awareness, uh, wellness programs, everything that we can do to really reach back and say thank you to St. Louis for being a great support to us and to uh, to the surrounding area. I salute you for that because that's that that's thank amazing. You. That is amazing. Yeah. Like you you get it, it gets no better, especially in this time right here. It gets no better than that community support. So, you know, I Absolutely. I really salute you for that. Like that that's amazing. So um you know, speaking of like this time during this pandemic, um, how have you been maintaining your mental during this time? Because you know, it's it's been rough. You know. Well, I'm gonna say this. I I love God, and uh, Jesus is absolutely the center of my joy. He gives me peace, uh, and in the midst of whatever storm that I've been through. Um, in the midst of this time, I actually lost my dad this year, uh, and uh, that was one of the worst days of my life. Uh, but in as much as it was one of the worst days of my life, I found God to be faithful, mm -hmm. and uh, He's been keeping me in perfect peace, okay. and, and and really and really doing it. I mean, in ways that I wouldn't have been able to do by myself. And so I'm grateful to God for uh, kind of keeping me busy. Uh, keeping me focused. Uh, we do a lot of good work with our church, and we've been uh, kind of helping our community adjust during this time. We did the food program over the summer to help feed families in our community, especially the children in our community that many of them didn't get to eat otherwise because they weren't going to school. Yeah. And so uh, I've been just kind of keeping myself occupied to uh, the different things that are going on. Oh yeah, and and you know that's I I can relate to that. So I I understand. You know, my condolences to you, uh, the loss Thank of your father. So I I understand that, and God is good because you see I'm here yeah. I'm here doing this uh interview with you and and, and yeah. Talking to you. I mean, no, I, my father was recent, but I mean it's still a loss, and and you know absolutely so I understand and, that. And it doesn't go away that fast. Nope. Yeah, it doesn't go away. Yes. You sure don't, but you know, it's it's good to see you here smiling and like you said, you're keeping yourself busy, you serving your purpose in the community. So you know that that's all God's purpose. So And I got this beautiful girl that that keeps me on top of my Michelle. Come here and say hi. <laughs> we would love to say hi. hi. Yeah. Everybody's waiting. <laughs> Come here and say hi. Come around, come around. This is my daughter, Michelle. Hi. And say, say hi to everybody. And uh, she keeps me in check. Um, she lets me know every day that I'm old. Uh, I can't dance. Uh, she, you know, we're doing virtual learning, but I, I can't get in the video because somebody's going to see me and everything. Uh, so <laughs> you tell me you're not old, you're just wise. That's it. But she doesn't agree with you on that. She she thinks that you're wrong. I'm just I'm just old. That's it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I agree with you, but uh, apparently I don't know what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, wow. Well, you but know, you know how it is. You know, it's, we, I'm pretty sure we all had that point in time in our lives when we didn't told somebody they was old. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we thought they were, you know, back then, you know, everybody over 30 was old, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, Brian, Brian from the Cadet Hoops, he said he agreed with your daughter. 
No, I figured that. I, I, the shade is real. I'm telling you, the shade is real <laughs> on today. You know, but it's tough out here. You know, I'm trying. I'm trying to be professional and and give this nice interview, but I'm a target. But that's but okay. Know, it's, it's no whole. It's no holes barred on here. You can express. Well, everybody's gonna have their day. <laughs> Everybody will have their day. You know, I'm just watching in the wings. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So um so Mr. Cannon, you know, with your with your uh inspiration your inspirational and motivational ways, um with the recent unrest that's been going on in this world, you know, what what's what's your take on it? Well, I want to tell you about something. I, I'm working on a book and uh the book that I'm writing right now, I was doing research and I found that there was over 6,000 men per, thou per 100,000 that are in jail, according to the uh, 2010 statistics. Over 6,000 per 100,000 are in jail. Mm -hmm. And of those 6,000 per 100,000, 4,300 of those were black men. Mm. That's, not, that's not something that I'm... Uh, uh, being racially insensitive about that's just statistical data and so i found that there's a there's a problem in our community if 4300 4, out of every 100,000 people are are going to jail of of the black men in america and that's across the country not just in st louis and so one of the things that i think is so important is that we have to become uh interested in keeping ourselves out of jail, keeping ourselves out of danger. Uh, we live in a community where uh, things are not always fair, and they've definitely not been fair to us. Even myself as a child, I was a victim of, of being falsely accused, and uh, if it wasn't again for the grace of God, I would have been arrested and everything else just because I was a black guy at the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, even I wasn't even at the place, but they just accused me of being there. You fit the and description. And so I, I fit the description. That's right. Yes, I fit the description. Yes, I was black and male. Their, their main reasons of arresting a black man, they fit the description. You fit the description. And I, and I was almost a victim of that and definitely could have been a victim of a whole lot worse. Uh, but there's so many of us, men and women, uh, that are, are facing... Uh, some real problems. And what we have to do is we have to stop waiting for somebody else to make it better for us. We have oh, to yeah. stop waiting for somebody else to pat us on the back and tell us that we're going to be okay. And we have to get motivated about making our communities better. I don't care if we're on Section 8, if we're renting, if we borrow in our cousin's house. We have to care about our communities. We have to care about our neighborhoods. We have to be interested in our children and our children's children and the neighbor's children. Uh, we have to be like that old lady that sat on the porch and told what the kids Turned were doing back down into the, the village. Street. Yep. Yes, we have we have to learn to take care of ourselves. And then when we begin to portray an image that says we care about ourselves, then people will begin to care more about us. But until we until we demonstrate that our lives matter to us. us, then we're sabotaging ourselves and we're sabotaging our future. So we've got to make sure that we get involved in our own communities and make a difference wherever we can. Oh, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think that's the main thing. That was a word. Woo, I love yeah. doing these interviews where y'all give a word. Amen. Said that. Amen. Amen. Don't make me Amen. start preaching. I, I, I love <laughs> these church moments on here. I love them. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. So, um, so, of course, it's said that this is like the most important election thus far for black people. Are you voting? I'm, I'm thinking about voting early, actually. I was talking to my mom, and, and she's already voted. And, uh, and I'm going to try to see if I can get out to the polls early. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I definitely vote every, even midterm elections. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I believe in that. Uh, and I, I agree that it's so important. Now, look, I have my own opinion about who we should vote for. 
Uh, but I think it's important that we as a people make sure that we exercise our right to vote. Yes. And, and make sure that we are participating in the process. Oh, yes. When you're participating in the process, you have a right to, to make demands about change in the process. Mm -hmm. But if you're not participating, then you're just somebody in the background making noise and you're not really a part of the solution. And so even if you feel like your vote doesn't count, you're wrong. It matters that you participate. It matters that you get out and you vote and you encourage others to vote. And when everyone participates, then we have a chance to make change. Now, look, there was about four million people nationwide that voted for Obama in 2012 that just did not vote in 2016. They just didn't vote. It's not a matter of whether or not you like the candidate or not. You just didn't vote at all. You just didn't participate. Now, I don't have to agree with your choice, mm. but I can say that it's important that you make a choice. You can't just lay back and watch it happen. Mm. You've got to get involved and do your part to be a part of what's going on in your community. So everybody, please get up, get out, go vote early. Go make sure that your vote counts uh, and make sure your neighbor votes, too. If you do, if they don't, just drag them down there and make them do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. You know, they, That's right. They got these vans out here, like people giving rides. They making sure right. that people get I, I think I'm talking no about renting the bus and do something. Polls. Yes, yes. I mean, because uh, we need the right person to win. I'm just going to say it like that. Exactly. We need the right person to win. Uh, and, and it's important for all of us. It's not just a black thing. It's important for the United States of America that the right person wins, exactly. uh, that, that we can uh, maintain our place in the world. You know, and I might not like everything about America, but I'm not choosing to go nowhere else. You know, I, I, I like I like it right here, you know. <laughs> where I can where I can actually own my own businesses and I actually have rights and privileges yeah. and, and things that I enjoy. And so uh, we just want to make America better. That's what I'll say. All right. Amen. Amen. So um, speaking of, you know, standing up and, and uh, you know, fighting for rights and things of that nature, um, around the sports industry, you know, all of these uh, teams like, Major League Baseball, even NASCAR, um, NBA, mm -hmm. WNBA, NFL, you know, they're all taking a stand in unity. So what's what's your take on that? Well, I think it's important that we do. Uh, you mean from a political standpoint or just change in our community? Well, from, from not from a political standpoint, you know, just from, from Damon Cannon's standpoint. What, what's, okay. what did you think when you saw that? Like, you know, how did it make you feel? Well, I, I, it was almost kind of about time moment. It was it was about time. You know, we I believe in unity. My my ministry is the United Body of Christ Ministries. I, I believe in unity, and I think it's so important that we learn how to work together, uh, how to be one, and to see. Hold on. Come on, Instagram. Hold on. Give us one second. Hey, Damon, can you move your phone around for a second? Hold on, you guys. We'll get him back in a moment. Did you lose me? I know it is, Marsha. Hold on. He's he still kind of... Come on, 
Hey, Damon, can you move to another spot? You lost my signal. Okay. Hold on, y'all. We're going to get him back. I know. I'm still here, and I'm right by my Okay. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Because we kind of lost where um where you was giving your opinion on how the, the sports industry stood in unity. Oh, okay. I was just saying that I think it's great that the leagues have come together and that they're supporting uh, the players, that they're supporting the community initiatives. Uh, there are heroes and there are stars. And uh, I think it's very important that uh, the world sees us come out and say this is important to us, not just the sports that we play, uh, but, but the lives that they live and the people that support us on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, that, that their lives are important to us and their safety and success is important to us. So hats off to all of the leagues from – uh, the Major League Baseball to basketball with their initiatives, w WNBA uh, and their initiatives, NASCAR, and, and down to the people that buy the tickets and sit in the stands. We couldn't do it without you. So I'm glad to be standing in solidarity with each of them. Oh, yeah, because, you know, sports is – sports play a major – uh, sports has a, a major inspiration on the world. You know, they bridge gaps in communities. They give people hope. And, you know, it, right. it, it's like, you know, seeing your favorite athletes on, on television or in person, it just, you know, it, it just changes your world. You know, it, it just makes you so happy. So to see all of that unity, you know, I mm -hmm. felt the same way. You know, I was, I was, like you said, it's about time because that's very important that you know, they, they do that and show that worldwide. And so speaking of sports, getting back into it, um, so what are you doing to prepare for this next season? Are you excited? Because, you know, even though we're in October, you know once December hit, boom, here comes 2020. It's, so. it's already August again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just It'll that fast. Again. So. Well, I, I'll tell you what, what I'm, my, my biggest uh, thing is, uh, of course, we want to keep our ladies in play and uh, and ready to compete. Uh, but we've been really working on sponsorship uh, and sponsorship through awareness in our community. There's a lot of small businesses in the St. Louis area. Uh, of course, we know that there's always Nike and Rawlings and, and the big players like that that are out there in the utility companies and the big corporations and so forth. And, and we, of course we appreciate their support, mm -hmm. but there are some small businesses and small agencies in our area that need our support uh, so that they can get awareness about the products and services that they have. Exactly. And so we, we've kind of decided to be Houston. We're kind of going small. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we want to go out and help promote some of those smaller businesses and help them to get a broader uh, ex uh, exposure in our community so that people know about them. Oh, yeah. And uh, I mean, there's some fantastic businesses, uh, fantastic restaurants and bars that are not national chains, but they're privately owned local businesses and uh, uh, manufacturers that are here. Uh, we're the home of Andy Seasoning. Uh, if you all know something about that, uh, <laughs> if not, you probably don't cook very very much. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we want to really uh, focus on making sure that those small businesses and area businesses get exposure. And, and what better platform than the WABA, which is continuing to expand and reach new markets, uh, you know, just from just from being a part of the WABA family, uh, they're going to be introduced to states uh, from the Midwest all the way out to the East Coast, all the way down to uh, I think they call that Georgia and Florida. But, uh, you know, I got that bitter taste when I say Georgia. Uh, it, it does something Georgia. to me. But uh, <laughs> Thank you for thank you for getting that out for me. Uh, but 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 a great opportunity 
for those businesses to expand their reach and uh, for us to establish a great partnership. So we're working a lot on that, uh, which takes some great energy and, uh, you know, some effort on our part to really get to know them and build some relationships. So hopefully we'll do well. Oh, yeah. Well, for uh, the viewers that's watching or the viewers that will watch uh, by looking at the recap, uh, can you state your information on here if, if somebody maybe outside of St. Louis maybe want to, you know, sponsor? So how, what, Absolutely. What's, what's your information? Give us your information. How can I tell you what the best thing to do is to reach out directly through our website to MidwestSound.fun. That's www.MidwestSound.fun. All of our social media is there. If you email, that will get to me directly. Uh, and you can reach out and contact me. And let's work on how we can put together a package to get you involved, not just here, but maybe you're uh, a part of, maybe your company is already present in another WABA market. Let's get you connected to some of those other teams and other owners mm -hmm. so that you can work with them and uh, support what they're doing as well as help get some exposure in those marketplaces. So uh, we're excited about that. We'd love to ha hear from you. No business is too small. It's your dream. It's your vision. This is our dream and our vision. Yeah. And we're definitely looking to be, to grow together. Again, you can always hit us up right here on the ground at Midwest Sound underscore hoops. Uh, I'm, I'm an Instagram rookie, but I'm learning. And, uh, You're doing you know, good. You seem to be doing good thus far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're live on Twitter as well. And so hit me up wherever you hit me. Just make sure you reach me. All right. All right. There you have it. And it's right here in the in the comment section, Midwest Sound Fun. I mean, MidwestSound.fun and uh, at Midwest Sound underscore hoops. Um, awesome. So, so being one of the, the 25 blessed teams to be within this league, um, of course, the WNBA the has teams. A, a great three-word slogan that they go by. It's our time. When you mm -hmm. hear it's our time, what comes to Damon Cannon's mind? Well, I, I, I think that that was so prophetic of our leadership to uh, bring forth that slogan, it's our time. And, and I would be selfish to say that when we say it's our time, that that's just about us winning the championship. Uh, I don't think it's just about the Midwest Sound winning the championship, even though that's a given. Uh, I think that when you hear it's our time, it says that for the owners and for the coaches and for the players in this league, this is our time to really be great. This is our time to see our dreams and our goals and our visions come to come to pass. I mean, whether that's being able to play at a next level, whether that's the ability to be a professional athlete or a professional coach or to be a, a business person at this level, it's our time. And it's not just our time to be here, mm -hmm. but it's our time to win here. It's our time to be successful and, and, and in every area of, of our game to, to see it at the bank. Uh, it's our time. It's our time to see it in the community. It's our time to see it in the stands. And it's definitely our time to see it on the trophy shelf. So we're looking forward All to right. delivering coming uh, this time next year. Uh, <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. And and so so what's next for the Midwest Sound? You know, I know you're preparing for the for the season, but do you all um have anything coming up as a you know, another special project or you know, are you all just starting your, your strength and conditioning? So uh, what's, what's next? Well, we're working out a little bit. We're working out um, uh, in our area. Thank God we haven't had uh, extreme COVID situations. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's still a few places where we can get in and play. Uh, we can get in and work out some. We're going to do some exhibition things that uh, get us an opportunity to tune up and learn how to play basketball and play well together. Uh, so we're looking forward to doing some of those things, as well as some of those charity events that we talked about earlier uh, to, to be a blessing to some of our sponsors and supporters. Uh, but other than that, we're just going to do more of the same. We just got to do it well every day. 
And one of the things that uh, I, I always talk about is we got to win every day in every area. If it's, if it's what we're doing in the community, we've got to win. If it's practice, we've got to win. And, and if it's uh, actually a game, we've got to be ready to win. And so we're just trying to learn, uh, get some great wisdom. Again, we have such great leadership with Faith and Marsha and, and some of the other ladies and men that help us. Um, you know, we're trying to glean all the wisdom that we can and uh, learn the things that will help us to be more successful. And, uh, and then we want to implement them and see them all happen on a high level. So uh, that's what we got going on now and uh, waiting for further instruction. All right. Well, you know, uh, we had quite a good conversation. It kind of slipped my mind there. Who is it that uh -huh. you're looking for? Who is it that you're looking forward to playing against again when the season starts? I forgot. Uh, the they mean that where the revenge is at? That yeah, that little yeah, piece of revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I think his name is Jesse. <laughs> I think that's his name. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to see if you know. It kind of slips my mind. You know how people are not very. Uh, important, so they kind of slip your mind. Oh, uh, but, uh, yeah. But I think that's. Me. I'll check my notes. I I know they wear purple. I know they wear purple, and, and so I'm just gonna find somebody wearing purple, and we're just gonna beat them. And I hope it's him when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be surprised if you will get a phone call soon. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure I will. I got all Georgia uh, area codes blocked. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. Hey, he might call from somebody else's phone. <laughs> nah, that's, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Well, we well, we yeah, ready for him. He might hit you up in the DM. <laughs> I, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. It's a good brother, though. Hey, and 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 in all fairness, uh, we had a very good team. Oh, yeah. We had a very good team last year, and and he had a team that he he pulled together, and he was able. To, to beat our team. And that wasn't something that I take lightly. So he was coach of the year in the WABA. He's and I think he really deserved it. Uh, he did a dynamic job of preparing uh, that team for the big moment. And they did it when it counted. And so I'm giving him trouble, but I also want to give him his props. He did a great job in running a great organization. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he puts his heart and soul into that. Like he he, Absolutely. He's he all about it. And, um, Absolutely. So, uh, last but not least, uh, you know, we like to close our um, conversation out with a kind word, a, a positive word. So now that we're, we're we're closing out, can you can you leave us with a positive word before we we part ways? I want to say this. Uh, you know, the Midwest Sound has our theme that's going for the calendar year. Uh, as a league, we have our theme is It's Our Time. Uh, but the Midwest Sound has a theme, and our theme is Yes, She Can. And, and I think it's important that all of the ladies out there at every age, whether you're a, a, a young girl or you're a, a player or you're a senior lady at whatever area of our age of life that you're in, I want to say, yes, you can. Uh, you can be successful. I know that you've been overlooked for opportunities, and I know that you've been kind of pushed aside as not as significant, but I want to say, yes, you can. Uh, you can be great. Uh, you can be successful. You can get that promotion. You can get the job. Even the one that they passed you over last time, don't let that be the end of it. You keep fighting. You keep pressing. And don't give up. I promise you, you can do it. Yes, we can. Man, I felt that. Ooh, you've been giving us a word today, Mr. Mr. Cannon. I don't Man, thank you. Thank you so much. That's all right. Send on cash okay. cap to the uh, sign basketball spirit. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, to end this week out with a with a positive word, we made it through. And to, and, and to hear it, you know, it, it, it'll carry us on over to the weekend. I thank you. And I thank you. And, and she knows her sports for giving us this platform and, and sharing us with oh, the well. world. And, we and really appreciate it. I thank it. you. I thank all coaches and players and 
and owners and, and definitely the whole league uh, for allowing me the opportunity to to use my platform and to and to partner with you all to to help introduce you to the world uh, so your your supporters can get to know you and, and follow your journey and support you in every way which way they can so so you are so welcome i'm I'm just as as honored and and grateful as as you all are and and just know that amen I appreciate amen. it. All right, and Perfect. just know, um, don't forget this. This is not your last interview, so so we we will Anytime. be talking again. We will be talking again. You know. Anytime, I'm looking forward to it. Just hit me up. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Great. Thanks again. All right, you have a good weekend. You too. All right. All right, you guys, there you have it. You got to know uh, the owner of the Midwest Sound, Mr. Damon Cannon. Again, uh, thank you for tuning in to another WABA IG Live conversation with She Knows Her Sports. I'm your lovely host, Helen Bohanna. Um, be sure to tune in to my story for um, the next WABA conversation. Um, I'm very excited about this guest, as I am about everyone who comes on to um, allow themselves to to speak on this platform. But um, other than that, please continue to support the WABA at www.womensaba.com. Follow them here on Instagram at Women's ABA. Uh, be sure to support me here on Instagram at She Knows Her Sports. Um, be sure to uh, comment. Be sure to share the recaps of uh, these IG Live conversations. Um, I post them all on my page. Um, right now for the WABA, they have league expansion open until April the 30th, I do believe. That means if you want to own your own team, just reach out to them. Again, they're now 25 teams in worldwide, including Tijuana, Mexico. So again, thank you for tuning in. Happy Friday. Have a blessed weekend. Tune in to my story for my next guest. And I'll see you Wednesday, the 21st at 12 p.m. <laughs>